this one's going to be a request, a viewer request. Uh, her, her name is Muley Friend. That's her uh, handle on YouTube. And she's requested Shirley McLean. So Muley Friend, thanks for asking for Shirley McLean. Hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like it. Uh, please, uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. It really helps me out. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So I hope I'm not just a handful of people who know who Shirley MacLaine is or remember her. She's a pretty great actress. And uh, so, Muley Friend, thank you for asking for this video, and here it is. So I'm not going to lie, there's a little bit to talk about here with Shirley MacLaine. Now, in 1934, she was named after Shirley Temple. We all know who Shirley Temple is, who was only six years old at the time. And Shirley MacLaine Beatty, that's her full birth name, MacLaine is spelled... M-C-L-E-A-N instead of how she changed it later. But Shirley McLean Beatty was born on April 24th, so she's a Taurus. And she was born in Richmond, Virginia. And in 1937, as a three-year-old, her mother enrolled her in ballet classes. And eventually in high school, she was um, on the cheerleading squad and acted in uh, school productions. Now in 1945, her father was a professor of psychology, a public school administrator, a real estate agent, and her mother was a drama teacher from Nova Scotia, Canada. And they were raised as Baptists. Now, when she and her little brother were children, uh, their father moved the family uh, around four times all around Virginia, eventually taking a position at a junior high school. And I guess that's one of those jobs he ended up with. Now, in 1954, she married a uh, businessman, Steve Parker. In 1955, uh, the summer before her senior year of high school, <laughs> she uh, went to New York City to try acting on Broadway. After graduating, uh, she was dancing in a Broadway production, then as a stage understudy. The lead uh, injured her ankle and Shirley had to replace her. So a few months later, a film producer saw Shirley on stage and signed her to Paramount for pictures. And her film debut was with Alfred Hitchcock, uh, and that film won uh, a Golden Globe Award. Now, quickly following was a role where she gained her first Academy Award and Golden Globe nomination. And in 1959, McLean sued a producer over a contractual dispute that has been credited with ending the old style uh, studio star system of actor management. This is 1959. She had just gotten out of high school a few years before. Now, in 1960, Shirley began long-running affairs with British uh, Lord uh, Mountbatten and also an Australian liberal leader, uh, politician. So she's got uh, the British covered from one end of the world to the other. Now, a film uh, she was in received 10 Academy Award nominations, winning Best Picture, Best Director, Best Original Screenplay, Best Art Direction, Best Film Editing. She didn't win anything. Um, but in 1963, she marched into the L.A. office of a newspaper and punched a columnist in the mouth because of what he said in his column about her, remember, contractual dispute, which, by the way, was with the producer who had introduced her to the movie industry, uh, but whom she eventually sued successfully for violating the terms of her contract. In 1963 and 1964, she replaced uh, Marilyn Monroe in two projects Marilyn had planned at the end of her life. So as Marilyn was going out, uh, Shirley was coming up. Uh, in 1966, Shirley sued 20th Century Fox for breach of contract. My gosh, all right, again with this. Uh, the studio reneged on its agreement to star her in a picture to be filmed in Hollywood. And instead, they gave her one week to accept their offer, offer of a Western to be filmed in Australia. Maybe that's how she met that uh, British politician or Australian politician. She won the case, and it was affirmed on appeal by the California Supreme Court in 1970. The case is often cited in law school textbooks as a major example of employment contract law. In 1969, McLean starred in the film musical uh, Sweet Charity and received a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress. And in 1972, she and her younger brother, Warren Beatty, who also changed the spelling of his last name, he's an actor, writer, director, and uh, they used their celebrity as fundraisers and organizers for Democratic uh, uh, nominee uh, George McGovern's campaign for president. And in 1977, she was nominated for an Oscar as a be Best Actress 
in a leading role. Now, in 1978, she won the Women in Film Crystal Award. I guess it's a British award for women who help expand uh, women's uh, roles in the entertainment industry. And in 1979, she starred in a film receiving a British Academy Film Award and the Golden Globe Award nomination. In 1982, she divorced businessman Steve Parker uh, after almost 30 years, and their daughter Sashi said that in her late 20s, Shirley revealed that an astronaut named Paul was Sashi's real father, not uh, Steve Parker. And in 1983, McLean starred in Terms of Endearment, which received 11 uh, nominations and won five, including Best Picture. She won her first Academy Award. And in 1989, in Steel Magnolia, she received a British Academy Film Award. And in 1990, in Postcards from the Edge, she received another Golden Globe uh, nomination. 2007-2008, she had an interest in UFOs and gave numerous TV interviews on the subject. And in her book, she described alien encounters and witnessing a Washington, D.C. UFO incident in the 1950s. And in 2009, she earned a Primetime Emmy Award and Golden Globe, Golden Globe Award nomination, plus appeared in the third and the fourth seasons of Downton Abbey on TV. Now, in 2011, she revealed to Oprah Winfrey that she had an open relationship with her husband and fell for the men, leading men she worked with. Also, that she and her neighbor observed numerous UFOs at her New Mexico ranch. And then in 2013, Penguin Group Publishers uh, published her daughter, Sachi Parker, her name is Sachi Parker, but maybe the, Parker's not a real dad, who knows? And uh, But they published her autobiography, Lucky Me, My Life With and Without My Mom, Shirley MacLaine. Shirley MacLaine has called the book virtually all fiction. But she already lied to the kid about her dad, so I don't know. In 2015, she sparked criticism for comments on Jews, Christians, and Stephen Hawking. In particular, she claimed that victims of the Holocaust were experiencing the results of their own karma and suggested that Hawking subconsciously caused himself to develop ALS as a means to better focus on physics. Good grief. Now, um, McLean has claimed that in a previous life in Atlantis, she was the brother to a 35,000 year old spirit named Ramtha. And she had a strong interest in spirituality and metaphysics. Um, she has undertaken such forms of spiritual exploration as walking the way of St. James, the community of Santiago. It's a network of pilgrimages uh, leading uh, to the shrine of the Apostle St. James uh, the Great in the Cathedral of San, uh, Santiago de Compostela in Galicia in northwestern uh, Spain, where tradition holds that the remains of the Apostle are buried. Just threw that in there. She's worked with Chris Griscom, who is an American healer, author, teacher, and founder of the Light Institute in Galistio, New Mexico, another spirituality situation, and uh, practicing transcendental meditation. Her well-known interest in New Age spirituality has also made its way into several of her films and books and TV projects even. So, okay, here's the cards finally on Shirley MacLaine. Okay, so this deck by Los Carabillo is by renowned uh, uh, child, uh, children's book uh, illustrator, Arthur Rackham. So this is called the Arthur Rackham Tarot. And these are amazing. Um, this uh, fellow was uh, born in 1867, and he was an illustrator of such books as uh, the Brothers Grimm uh, Tales, um, Peter, who was it? Peter Pan and Kensington Gardens. And uh, so the cards themselves, they come in this typical uh, box. Okay, and it's got illustrations from uh, Rackham all around it, which is nice. The uh, illustration booklet is just a typical uh, booklet in, I think, three languages and just with a very brief uh, talk about uh, rack up here, but with good um, suggestions as to how to divine the cards, but nothing to write home about. <clears throat> the cards themselves, they're just typical. There's nothing special about the back that I can see, and uh, they're easy to handle, And uh, but the thing about these cards is the work. So when you have an artist who has gone into such detail for these images, and these are pulled from his works over the um, ages, I guess, you know, I guess he was active uh, 100 years ago or so. And uh, so fairy tales for children. And so this sort of stuff just really lends itself perfectly to telling stories in the tarot. The one thing that's odd, like, so for instance, here's a nine of pentacles, and you won't see nine pentacles on here, so you really have to know what the divination is and then interpret his drawings, which are just fantastical uh, into that uh, divination. So I like to put the cards out like this so that you can get an idea of what the decks look like if you're not a person who buys a lot of cards, or I always have my eyes open for something different. Um, I love that uh, artists uh, come up with these cards and... Um, and put so much attention into the original 
uh, works. And then that gives us, and then when someone wants to choose from their vast uh, repertoire to interpret the tarot, that's even more intention laid on top of that. So I hope you like them. I'm crazy about them. So these are Arthur Rackman's, or just the Rackman Tarot by Les Carbio. Okay, Shirley MacLaine. So very, very interesting a person from from the very beginning. I mean, even as a young uh, woman, she was fascinating. And, uh, and now, uh, as an old lady, she's still fascinating. And I would love to have time to sit down and talk to her personally. You know, I lived in Albuquerque right up the road from Santa Fe. Went to Santa Fe quite a few times. And I knew uh, Shirley McLean had a uh, ranch there, uh, but uh, never ran into her that I know of. But first, before we get started, just a second of meditation. That's all it takes. Okay, so Shirley McLean, and I have seven questions actually. So these will be six three card uh, questions and then the final seventh question will be a full Celtic cross with two questions in there. And uh, so here we go. So does Shirley McLean actually believe what she says about past lives and aliens? Now listen, I'm not asking if there are past lives and aliens. I'm asking if Shirley McLean believes that there are past lives and aliens. Does Shirley McLean actually believe what she says about past lives and aliens? This will be just three cards. Okay, one, two, and three. Does Shirley McLean believe what she says about past lives and aliens? Three cards. First card. Okay, so this is the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups are uh, partnerships. Um, this is beautifully illustrated here with a, a mother, I suppose, uh, beckoning to her, her little child. And um, these uh, fish uh, swimming uh, through the... So she's, this is actually uh, water here. You can see the top of the water here. These fish are swimming through the water. And uh, this is indicative to me of uh, a rebirth and past lives. So this Two of Cups means that she has compassionately coupled with that belief. Second card, does she believe past lives and aliens? Okay, and this is very interesting because this is the uh, hermit. And the hermit uh, is the um, the figure in the uh, in the uh, major arcana who doesn't make a move forward until he's studied. Okay, he's he's uh, taking a look at where he has to go, and then he makes a wise decision about moving forward. And I've got to say, this also beckons to me of uh, the, um, the knowledge the of past lives. And then the last card for this with this three of the major arcana, and this is the Empress. And the Empress is fruitful, and uh, and you can think of her almost as mother, mother Nature, with intuition by her side. So uh, I'm going to say that this is a strong reading, not only for Shirley MacLaine believing in past lives and uh, aliens, but also for some support, at least, of past lives. Interesting. Okay, so the next question, I'm going to say, did she actually have past lives? Did Shirley MacLaine actually have past lives? Did Shirley MacLaine actually have past lives? Did Shirley MacLaine actually have past lives? Three cards. Okay. One, two, and three. It's interesting how sometimes the cards uh, give you even more information than you asked for. Did Shirley McLean actually have past lives? First card for that one is this Nine of Wands. You know, the uh, Nine of Wands is sort of being uh, embattled. Um, uh, wands are actions or plans. Uh, it's forward movement. And uh, we can see that this Nine of Wands is depicted really in the middle of this uh, forest. He's almost a part of the forest, really. And um, that beckons past lives to me, but uh, that's not an answer yet. The next card then for this with the Six of Coins. And the Six of Coins has to deal with um, doling out uh, the value, uh, giving the value uh, among uh, where it's uh, needed. Um, 
hmm, doling out the value, and she actually had past lives. And then the last card for this is this Nine of Swords, and this Nine of Swords is uh, Nightmares. And we can see that this young woman has, has propped, you know, she's bolted up in bed. It looks like she just woke up from uh, a dream. Has she actually had past lives? This doesn't, uh, this isn't clear to me. Um, so let me talk about it again. So has she actually had past lives? So the, the nine of uh, wands is speechless of really being embattled. So, I mean, if I, if I think about it, um, it's usually uh, represented by a bunch of wands in the back and a, a, a soldier sort of standing in front of those wands um, uh, looking as if he's, he's gone through a lot. Could those wands be past lives and could the soldier be, you know, in, indicative of what he's gone through in those past lives and yet he's here, here still ready to go on? It's one way of looking at it. Uh, and the six of coins is talking about doling out the value uh, where it's needed. And it could be, uh, if you want to think of it this way, that uh, we gather uh, little bits of knowledge along the way. And so that is indicative of us get, picking up pieces of value uh, as uh, it's required. And then the last card with this uh, Nine of Swords, it's sort of an awakening, isn't it? It's a, Nine of Swords is typically uh, you know nightmares. But if we dig a little deeper and think of it as an awakening, I don't know, this kind of does uh, lean in that direction. It's not a clear, clear answer, but it does lean in that direction of uh, that um, maybe she has had past lives, and she's remembered them here in this in this Nine of Swords. So we have to just be happy with what the cards give us. You know, you can't uh, ask for more than what they've told you, really. Then the third question is, was the father of her daughter, Sashi, actually, really, an astronaut named Paul? And I was never uh, clear about that uh, before. Oh, look at this. So this is the Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups is speaks to family and happy family specifically. Wow. Um, so was the father of her daughter, Sashi, actually an astronaut named Paul? And, uh, you know, I should say, I, it doesn't matter whether he was named Paul. Was the daughter, was her daughter's father actually an astronaut? And in what I read, it wasn't clear whether she was speaking of a modern-day astronaut or um, an astronaut from some other time. So was the father of her daughter, Sashi, actually an astronaut? That's what I want to know. Was the father of her daughter, Sashi, actually an astronaut? and not uh, Stephen Parker, the businessman, the Earth businessman. Three cards. Okay, one, two, three. Was the father of her daughter, Sashi, actually an astronaut? First card for that then, besides the 10 of cups that we just had, is this King of Wands. Okay, so the King of Wands is about, um, the wands are uh, action, a forward movement, planning, and the King of Wands is, um, you know, fully in charge of that. And it's very interesting that this depiction here shows this uh, fellow really hot on the back of this little fox. So could this little fox, almost riding that little fox, so could this little fox be Shirley MacLaine? And could this um, this figure here with his sword in hand and uh, the King of, uh, of Plans, of getting something done, actually uh, be representative of perhaps that astronaut? I don't know. That's a stretch. The uh, next card out of the rank there is Strength. Wow. Okay, Strength. So Strength lends a credibility to a reading. It tells us uh, that uh, there's, uh, there's uh, fortitude there. There's, there's, there's just simply Strength uh, in, uh, for me in the question. And the last card about whether the, daughter, uh, the father of her daughter was actually an astronaut is we come up with a Knight of Value, a Knight of Coins. And uh, let's see if we can pick this knight out in this. We can see his leg. We can see his cape flowing in the background. This must be his face, and it's almost an impish-looking face uh, there. And so, again, not particularly clear, but let's talk about it again. So was uh, the father of her daughter, Sashi, actually an astronaut? We have the king of wands, king of plans, king of actions. So that leans in that direction. The second card then being strength. Um, again, just lends credibility uh, to the reading. And then the final card, this Knight of Coins, when the Knight, oh, his head is bent down. Now I see it cl more clearly. This Knight's head is bent down here. He's almost holding his head in his hand. I don't know, if, if I want to think of this as a, a Knight and an astronaut as a, kind of the same kind of a person. And uh, this fella 
is riding this horse uh, off into some sort of uh, a valuable battle as certainly uh, an astronaut would ride that rocket off into battle so maybe this is as close to the cards as close as the cards can get me to on this question but um yeah i'm saying this leans pretty heavily in that direction it doesn't reference in here um the businessman that was shirley mclean's uh husband at the time so the um fourth question has Shirley McLean ever actually really witnessed a UFO? Has Shirley McLean actually really witnessed a UFO as she believes a UFO to be? Okay, so you know we have to say well, two cards fall out. Actually, three. Well, we'll take those three cards. I'm going to uh, deal them out just like that. UFO. So has she actually really witnessed a UFO? And the first card out of the rack is this Two of Swords. This is making a choice. It's interesting that this card in particular happens to feature, you know, this uh, element of the sky, this kite uh, up in the sky, kind of tied to Earth, and this uh, young baby uh, witnessing that sky. Uh, in the eyes of a baby, this would certainly be a phenomenon. If you want to think of ourselves as just uh, babies on this planet and, um, and beings from some other world being much more advanced to us, uh, and this, uh, this kite almost even has a face in it. It's almost got two eyes and a nose there. So if you want to think of this that way, a baby on the Earth um, uh, witnessing um, something uh, in the sky that uh, that baby wouldn't know how to explain it. It'd be an unidentified flying object. And that question is, has she actually, ever actually witnessed a UFO? And here this babe is witnessing this uh, flying kite. Interesting. The next card out of the rack here is this Knight of, of Wands. And uh, this Knight of Wands is again a knight is a fighter he's the um the person when, in the royal suite that when they're giving a remit when they're giving an action which is a, a, a wand is an action they're going to really uh, make that thing come true and so this i believe shows Shirley mclean being that knight picking up this this uh, belief all right and carrying it forward just praising to the sky that and looking for that sign again interesting this speaks to her belief of that uh, uh ufo and then the final card, well, we get the astronaut back again, don't we? Wow. The King of Wands, the card that I referred to as the astronaut in the previous reading, uh, comes back to us in this reading. And uh, that's what I say. I always, You always hear me say that when the cards start repeating themselves in a series of readings, it tells me that the cards are playing along with me. They're kind of confirming to me the language that, that we're speaking together. Okay, I identified that card as an astronaut in the previous reading, and it comes to me in this question about UFOs, just as kind of a clarification. So I think she probably she has, uh, uh, at least she certainly believes that she has witnessed uh, UFOs, just as this baby. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Okay, the next question is, does she really believe that Jews affect... And this is her belief, not did this is this the truth of the matter, but does she actually really believe that Jews affected during the Holocaust brought that suffering upon themselves as a karmic balance? Does she actually really believe that? Does Shirley MacLaine really believe that about the Jews that suffered a horrific experience during the um, Holocaust? She believes they actually really brought that on themselves two of coins oh my goodness this almost fell out and i forced it back into a pack and so this two of coins is uh, finding a balance a valuable balance uh, does she believe that is my question does she believe that the jews during the holocaust were uh, uh suffering just a karmic uh, balance there is that her actual real belief okay three cards one, two, three. Does Sherman McLean really believe in that uh, the Jews were suffering a karmic balance during the Home Holocaust? Uh, Shirley's belief. So we start out with the Knight of Swords. Oh yeah. So yeah, again, like I said, the Knight is going to fight for the uh, the remit they've been giving. So for whatever reason, um, and Swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And so this knight on the horse, uh, you know, flying through the air here, uh, is going, if that's whatever his belief is, he's going to fight for that truth, that justice, uh, those rules, that law that he believes in. So I th this is very, this could be the only card I pick for this, and this would be yes. The uh, next, uh, with this eight of wands, 
this eight of you know wands are actions, plans, emotions, forward moving. This eight of wands kind of depicts a bunch of uh, witches flying around on brooms, male and female. Okay, and um, so. I hate to say it, but but yeah, this is this uh, is is more of what her beliefs are. And then the final uh, card here for this, with this Five of Cups, is uh, feeling uh, wow, wow. So this is feeling uh, uh, as if something has been spilt that uh, is is um, makes you unhappy. So yeah, and so it's typically depicted in the typical right of weight. Here uh, we've got this uh, maiden kind of peering over the ledge. Uh, at this cup that looks like these little imps are filling up uh, from maybe uh, some water trickling down this uh, cliff. Um, and uh, the Five of Cups is typically a few cups spilt over and a couple of cups uh, left upturned. So it's meaning, you know, don't uh, um, cry over what you've lost because you have more uh, that will sustain you. And again, this just, in my head, this works for her actually, yeah, really believing that. So the Knight of Swords, this Knight is going to fight for what they believe. Uh, this eight of wands is a lot of issues happening at the same time, and that's sort of what we have here and what we had uh, during that uh, event. And uh, this five of cups is um, uh, her belief that would be, you know, don't cry over this uh, suffering, this what you've lost right now because you've got a little something left to build on. So she believes it. Wow. Remember, I'm not asking if this is true. I'm asking about her beliefs. Her beliefs. Her beliefs. Now, about Stephen Hawking, does she actually really believe that Stephen Hawking brought on his own uh, ALS uh, in order to better focus on physics? Is that her actual real belief that Stephen Hawking uh, brought on his own ALS to better focus on physics? You know, because, I mean, she could just be all this time looking for some sort of a, uh, a fame vehicle to gain attention for herself. But does she actually really believe that Stephen Hawking had brought on his own ALS illness uh, in order to better focus on physics, you know, not knowingly, but you know, within his own consciousness, having done that. The signifier of this, then, okay, so uh, again, a repeating card. This is the King of Wands uh, coming back, kind of riding on the back of that uh, fox. Um, uh, interesting. This is um, the 11, 10, 11. This is the major arcana. This for me is judgment. Yeah. Okay. So this is judgment. Does Shirley MacLaine believe that Stephen Hawking brought on his own ALS? This is judgment. Uh, this is a small figure here in the in the presence of all of that judgment. And then this is the twenty. Is the is the uh, world. This is the end of a cycle, a complete end of a cycle. This isn't clear to me. So let me talk about it again. So the question is, does she really believe Stephen Hawking brought on his own ALS in order to better study physics? So uh, we start out with this uh, king of wands, although he's carrying a sword, the wand is here. This king of wands riding in on the back of a little fox. If you want to consider the little fox uh, the knowledgeable being, and the King of Wands on his back being the greater uh, um, universe of physics, um, that'd be a real stretch. Um, this judgment here, um, I think, yeah, this is telling me that this is a strong yes card, and this is, um, yeah, a karmic balance. And that certainly is what that sort of an event would be if someone was able to bring on their own uh, uh, solitude, so to better focus on something, karmic balance, judgment, and then the final card is is the world, is the end, is the end of that cycle, um, and then something new starts after that. I think she believes it. I do think she believes it. That's a difficult read right there. Um, I mean, you really have to reach to get those conclusions. Now, the um, final Celtic cross, number seven, and I'll reveal this even before I ask the question. This is the Eight of Cups. Uh, and the Eight of Cups is having to walk away from something of really great importance to you and uh, emotional importance and leave it behind, as depicted by uh, this 
uh, person sort of floating up to the surface. This is uh, looks like a water scene to me. This person sort of floating up to the surface, leaving behind these uh, people beckoning uh, to them. And the question is, um, in number seven, was one of her past lives living in what we called Atlantis? And in that life, was she the brother of an ancient spirit? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So we're talking about Atlantis, which the myth or the, you know, the fable is that Atlantis fell beneath the ocean. And here she is uh, leaving uh, these people under the water. Interesting. So this Celtic cross will be, was one of her past lives. And this is so really asking the universe, in fact, was one of her past lives living in what we call Atlantis. And in that life, was she the brother of an ancient spirit? Okay. So was one of her past lives uh, living in what we call Atlantis. We'll need six cards for that. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we see that the card that came out was um, completely appropriate for the question that I was about to ask that I had not even verbalized yet. The signifier for that is the seven of wands. Uh, the Seven of Wands is uh, typically depicted in the Rider Waite deck as uh, someone on top of a cliff with one wand, kind of fending off a bunch of other wands that are poking up at them from the bottom of the cliff. So it speaks to the strength of one person's uh, actions, one person's plans against uh, you know a multitude of, of other issues. And here we have sort of a David and Goliath uh, depiction here. And the question being, was one of her past lives living in what we call Atlantis? So that's the signifier. So let's go on. The uh, okay, wow. The challenge to that is the fool's journey, the beginning of the major arcana, the zero, the very start of a journey. Wow. Um, I uh, immediately this makes me think that it may have been actually her first life, huh? The um, base of this reading then with this queen of swords. And remember the question is, uh, was one of her past lives living what we call Atlantis? So this queen of swords, swords of truth, justice, rules, and law. The queen of swords is, look at that, she's kind of looking uh, for uh, that truth, justice, those rules, that law. Interesting. The uh, past of this uh, right here is this nine of coins. And the nine of coins is typically uh, depicts someone who's v just lavishly um, uh, uh, covered in all of their value. All right. And then this, and it's usually uh, a symbol in that card of the nine of uh, coins that shows this, the person owning a very uh, extravagant uh, uh, pastime of that day, which this certainly uh, would be this uh, parrot where this woman's telling that parrot to be quiet just uh, shows us uh, that this would be an expensive uh, toy that only a very a wealthy person would have. So it was one of her past lives living in what we call Atlantis. And so this, uh, having everything in abundance, and look at the beautiful tapestry she has on the wall here. This is a very wealthy person. Uh, was one of her past lives uh, living in what we call Atlantis. Huh. I'll have to just play out these cards. The next uh, card in this is, um, wow, it comes back up again. This two of uh, pentacles uh, really having to balance out um, uh, something you're worth. And uh, this shows a little baby sitting on a mushroom while these fully grown uh, persons are uh, traipsing about on uh, looks like horses or, uh, you know, leading their lives um, in, in, in contrast to this uh, innocent babe up here. So that's the sky. And uh, what's interesting here is as it does show us people living and carrying on a life um, kind of below, you know, uh, under the auspices of this uh, innocent babe. This makes me think of Atlantis somehow. I'm asking was one was actually one of her past lives living in Atlantis. And then the uh, final outcome for that question then is this eight of coins. And this eight of coins is typically really practicing your craft, practicing your value, getting it down right. So let's see if we get some sort of an answer to that question with these cards. Um, and the question is, was one of her past lives living in what we call Atlantis? And we start out with this David and Goliath kind of uh, seven of wands, really having to manage uh, a lot of plans, a lot of actions. But that's challenged by 
of um, the the fool beginning on his journey, uh, which makes me think that would have been maybe her first uh, life. Uh, then the um, uh, bottom of this reading, the base of this reading, uh, is this queen of swords, this queen of uh, truth, justice, rules, law. Could that have been, at the base of all of this, could that have been her position uh, in that in that life? In the past of this reading, it does show a very uh, wealthy uh, woman here uh, with the expensive diversion of the day. Okay, In the sky of this reading, it does give reference to uh, little people living below uh, some other um, uh, innocent, all right? And then in the uh, likely outcome here, with this eight of uh, coin, practicing your worth. So if this was her first life, then this would be a valid uh, uh, response to that, and that this is the beginning of practicing uh, her worth, her, her life's, her soul's uh, mission. Very esoteric reading. Then the next part of that would be, in that life, was she actually the brother of an ancient spirit? In that life, was she actually the brother of an ancient spirit? Well, if she was a queen, then she wasn't a brother, was she? So but in the um, in that past life, was she the brother of an ancient spirit? So here we get the, um, the Ace of Cups. And the Ace of Cups comes to us with a great big offer of compassion. All right? So this woman is illuminated. Uh, by the, um, the the awesomeness of that uh, compassion. Interesting. The uh, challenge or the environment that it's in then, ah, the cards repeat, and uh, the environment that it's in. Interesting. I um, spoke to this card earlier as being, um, uh, you know, an innocent uh, kind of witnessing something flying over them that they couldn't identify. And uh, here... I'm saying, in that life, was she the brother of an ancient spirit? Interesting. So the challenge to this um, huge offering of compassion is uh, not understanding uh, what we're seeing. The hopes and the fears for this, then, um, was she the brother of an ancient spirit? Well, and, and not understanding what we're seeing could speak to uh, maybe not understanding that she wasn't a brother. I don't know. And then the hopes and the fears for that, with this five of coins, the five of coins, gosh, this uh, definition is, is escaping me uh, for the moment. The five of coins is being left out in the cold. Okay. This is kind of um, the brother of the nation's spirit. So this uh, five of coins speaks to us, and it's depicted here by this, uh, 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 looks like a beggar woman, um, out uh, all by herself, outside of the warmth of all these uh, habitations that are around her, um, being left out in the cold. So that's the hopes and the fears for that. And then the uh, final outcome for this part and the whole reading then is this two of the main so what's happened is the um, the device that I used to make that overhead recording quit. I guess it ran out of memory uh, when I was speaking right there. And I was talking about this two of the major arcana, this uh, empress, kind of looking out uh, into the uh, looking out looking for something else. Okay, and this could this be um, uh, Shirley MacLaine uh, looking towards uh, more lives um, as the, the as this was the end of that reading and the end of her life. So that was what I um, was saying, in effect, and I just thought I'd put this little piece on here to finish off that video. Very surprising to me that uh, the tape stopped right there. So that's what I got. Well, that's it. Shirley MacLaine. I hope you enjoyed the uh, video. Man, she had an amazing career, and she did a lot of stuff, and she's still kicking. So there's uh, inspiration for all of us. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.